Hello, it's Jonathan Bowman Perks, and I'm very fortunate to be again with General John Stoko. And we're talking this time about um, vulnerability and that only the strong can be vulnerable. And I, I learnt as a young officer from General John when he was our commanding officer the importance of courage added to humility, but with a, a nice mix of discipline in there. So, just going to have a chat about, about your experiences, John, in both business. Um, which you've been in business for, for many years, with a lot of different, very high-profile roles, but also from private soldier to, to major general. What, what about your um, learning from your mistakes and uh, setbacks and just things that didn't get that you hoped you were going to get that never happened? What, what did you learn and how's that shaped the man you are today? Can you give some examples? Certainly, to talk about you know, mistakes and how they shape you is actually quite an interesting, interesting question. I, I think there, there, are two, there are two examples I, I would use, and both, again, involve people because people are the team. And one was that when I was in the my army days, when I was commanding a subunit of 100 single soldiers responsible for communicating for this particular brigade I was with. And everything went badly wrong by day three. By day three, we had not spoken to anybody. <laughs> Communications did not work. We were in a bit, wait, we were, yes, we were in a difficult part of Germany, but um, and nothing was happening. I was sent for by my brigade commander. And we wandered off into a barn somewhere and sat in a pile of old tires. He looked at me, and I, I thought I was about to be sacked. And actually, this was a lesson in leadership because he looked at me and he said, "John, if you were a transport company manager, your trucks are not coming home, are they?" I suddenly realised then where we were going. And then he said, "Go away and make sure the trucks come home." So I left, breathing a sigh of relief, but wondering what on earth am I going to do? I went back to my little command post where my key team were sitting, and I knew they'd let me down. But rather than go and say, you've let me down, say, we've got it wrong. We need to sort this out, and it will not go wrong again. So let's make it work, guys. And so we sorted that between them, and it worked. Wow. Because I'd forgotten to use my people in the right way. Yeah. The second example I'd use is, again, forgetting about people. When I joined my, my first company after leaving the Army, which is an infrastructure services company, and I was responsible for a particular program, things were going well. We were starting to lose money. And again, the chief executive, who was a very um, powerful man, sent me, and he said, John, we're losing, we can't afford to keep losing the money at the rate you're losing it. Right. Sort it out. That's all he said. So I'm thinking, now, what am I going to do? Because I'm quite new at this game, you know, my, my first step into the business yeah, world. Yeah. So I got my team together. I said to them, we're losing money. Why are we losing money? What are we going to do to put that right? We spent a day going through the program, looking at the project, looking at our deliverables, looking at why we weren't getting the right returns, where were our suppliers not supplying what we needed, and why weren't they doing it just in time, where were they taking days to get it there. And we put new rigors in process and we sorted it out. But again, it goes back to people. Yeah. But don't, you know, if you do something wrong, you make a mistake, do not then blame everybody else. Yeah. It's your fault as much as their fault. It's yeah. your fault as a leader, not recognizing it. Yeah, that's very true. And um, uh, we were discussing earlier about some CEOs that uh, the three questions I, I'm always interested in asking them, you know, when was the last time you were, you were dead wrong? And um, how quickly is the follow-on question, how quickly did you realize that and how quickly did you resolve it is the third question. And it always worries me when a CEO goes, mm, uh, no, do you know what? Can't think of a time I was dead wrong. And of course that's in itself a problem. And uh, what's been your experience of of arrogant leaders who, who crash, and, and the humble ones, but who have still the courage to have those difficult conversations, those courageous conversations about performance or people? Well, we've all, we've all worked for both both types. Sadly, too often it's the former, the arrogant ones. And I've been subject to a number of those in the last five years, um, where I was not running the organization. I, I, was, I was the head of strategy of this organization. But our, our lead leader was arrogant. There's no doubt about that. And I could see he was heading in entirely the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, he, he was putting forward numbers that really weren't right. Um, he was banking on a pipeline that really was just paper thin. Yeah. And he wouldn't listen to anybody mm. because he knew that would help him make his achieve his objectives, his personal objectives, and without being found out. So he'd get his money at the end of the year. Yeah. And you could see this. And, yeah. and at the end of the year, the, the company almost crashed, this particular division of the company. But he got his money. Uh, but he got his money. But then a month later, he left. He was pushed. So it's quite interesting. 
people could see this, but nobody's prepared to stop him, yeah. or he wouldn't listen to be stopped. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I found people around me were almost too cautious about stopping because they would seem to be wanting, if they put their hands out and say, we think this is wrong. Yeah, and that's very interesting. There's a very good book by Margaret Heffernan mm. called Willful Blindness, where people are, if they don't challenge toxic behaviour, they are bystanders, they're condoning it. Yeah. Uh, and it really, you know, bad things happen when mm. good men and women stay quiet. Yeah. And we do need to stand out, and even if it means we lose our jobs. But Ch challenge is key. Uh, and actually, if you, if you challenge and the right result occurs, people don't respect you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's having that courage. It goes back to the word you said, courage. The courage takes many forms. Yeah. There's the military type of courage where, you know, when you're being fired at and things are going wrong around you, you have the courage to take the right decision and recognize the people around you need looking after. Yeah. Uh, and it's the courage of business to stand up when you see something's going wrong and, and stand up and be counted. Yeah. Because you don't want to be counted. Exactly. John, yeah. thank you once again. Okay. Really great thank spending you. time with you. Thank Good. you. Thank you.